Brothers and sisters, I've always wondered and asked myself, if God created all of us, created everything that you see, how was it like in the beginning? Because the Bible tells us clearly that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we understand that heaven is within us. Heaven is within man. Heaven is someone inside you, the spiritual man who lives in heaven. And of course, we know heaven is in our minds. Hmm. And we know we are two natures here. The spiritual man and the natural man. So, if heaven is in the mind, the spiritual man, then the earth is the dust of the earth, the natural man. In the beginning, God created the spiritual and the natural man. Hmm. Understanding now? Are you coming to the point now? So, in the beginning, God created something here. He created the heaven, which is the mind, the consciousness, the spiritual man, and the earth, which is the natural man, the man who has not yet seen the light, yet the light of God, the awakening of God. And these two, God created. And uh, when you look at how the earth, that is the flesh, was created, after it was created, it does not have this awakening. It doesn't know itself. It doesn't know who it is. It's just some lying thing. Like there you see a body in a mug. So what happens there? We see verse 2. <laughs> it says, And the earth, talking about the body, this body, the unawakened body, flesh, natural man, and the earth was without form. Hmm, without form and void. So it means this body, it was without form and void. Without form, it means something just confused. And void, void means, void means there was a deep hole, a deep hole sense of this, this body did not have his own understanding of who it is. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. What is this deep? The deep represents the soul. You see, the soul is so vast, so big. There is a lot of potential in our soul, which is our emotion. But you see, the flesh had a very deep, deep, deep darkness, deep confusion. Deep. You, have you ever seen somebody who is not saved? How they're in deep confusion? They really want to know God, but they are lost. They really want to understand, who are you, God? What is that thing which can satisfy me? But they don't know. So that is how... After God created man, he was like. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So what are these waters? It is the great deep, the great deep in the emotions of man, the emotions of the natural man. And then what happened? What happened after the Spirit of God? Remember, this Spirit of God is the life-giving Spirit. The life-giving Spirit moved upon this dead man, this man, the natural man who was dead. And what happened? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. What is this light? This light, it is the spiritual uh, uh, awakening, the spiritual en enlightenment. And that is the moment man became a living soul. Do you understand? And this is the man whom God created, who had his natural and his spiritual man connected one as God. This was the perfect man. This is the real picture of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man connected. Are, are you trying to see the point? So where did the problem come in? Where did the rubber meet the road? It is when man, this, this perfect man who was the first Adam this man who was perfect like Jesus, when he decided in the Garden of Eden, and what garden was this? The garden was the mind. He decided to follow the flesh instead of following the spirit. He started deciding, let me walk in the flesh. Let me see what the earth can offer. Let me eat from something else, not eat from what God had given. Remember, the word of God is food. God said, Jesus actually said 
that man can, shall not live by bread alone, by flesh alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So instead of eating from God, man decided to eat from the world. And that is where separation came in. And Jesus was lost. That first Adam was lost because Jesus is a true representation of Adam. So now we see all through our life, we were cut off from this spiritual man. Our spirit died and now we walk in the flesh. For so many years we've been walking in the flesh, waiting for Jesus to come back. And uh, how is Jesus going to come back? Is he going to come back by just watching him in the skies? Oh, that's Jesus dropping. Actually, in the book of Luke 17, verse 21, it says, On that day, they shall say, Lo, Lo, here, Lo, there, but the kingdom of God is within you. It, he has always been the spiritual man who was disconnected. That is where the kingdom of God is. And Jesus is that kingdom of God. When finally, the spirit man connects back to the natural man and the two become one, then Jesus will have come back. That is the second Adam. This is what we are waiting for. The awakening that people are going to awaken to the real truth of who they are in Christ Jesus. I know this is something that people will be like, hmm, Keith, what are you talking about? But dig deep, my brother. Dig deep, my sister. You'll understand the kingdom of God does not come by observation. The kingdom of God is within you. It is that spiritual man when he awakes to the true nature of who he is. My friend, when you awake to the true self and you awake this spiritual man through salvation, then the saved man, he starts controlling the natural body. Remember, even Enoch, what happened to him? He walked with God until he was no more. For God translated him that there was no more Enoch anymore. It was now when I look at Enoch, is it really Enoch or is it God? He was so synchronized that he, the old Enoch was gone. Think about Jesus. Jesus was fully man and fully God. But why, did we, why do we call Jesus God? Because he was synchronized to a point that you could not be able to differentiate the man versus God. And that is exactly who we are. Remember the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Are we in this world? We are connected to God in a way that you cannot be able to imagine. My friend, the book of John chapter 14 verse 20 says, On that day you shall know that I am in you and you are in me and I am in my Father. And we are all one. It has always been like this. It is only that you have been waiting for another imaginary Jesus who looks like a guy who came from a salon. The one that we see in the movies. My friend, that is not who we are waiting for. Jesus coming back, it is basically you getting to know God and getting to be saved. And then the kingdom of God comes into the flesh and you become one with God. And my friend, the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is here. That is what we are waiting for. And that is what we already have. And if you don't have the kingdom of God within you, my friend, you have not yet seen heaven. Heaven is within us. And right now, we are already seated in heavenly places. We are already seated with Christ Jesus in heaven. Right now, as I speak to you, I'm in heaven, my friend. <laughs> in my mind, heaven is within us. Don't wait for some imaginary something. God coming from some cosmic location up in the skies. He lives within you. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It is joy, peace, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is what the kingdom of God is all about. Hope this made sense to you. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you will meditate upon this. You'll not wake up and just say, Keith, what is this that you have taught us? Meditate upon the word of God and you'll understand what I'm saying.